camera, I have made the saddle for the bridge. I have just got the neck sitting in here. I'm going to put this 18 thousandths pick on the first fret. Set the straight edge on top of that. Set the straight edge on top of the E string saddle there. The high E that is. And I'm just going to take my gauge and stick it under here and see what kind of clearance I've got. I know it's going to be low the way it looks. It's only like 30 thousandths at the moment. So that's really low, which would mean I'd have to bring the neck angle up or the saddle up. The saddle is probably average to slightly low at the moment. So I could go higher with the saddle if necessary. I'm not sure how much higher I'd want to go. My fear is getting the neck angle too high on a 12 string. I'd rather keep it low than get it too high. I don't want to get it too low, but I would rather keep it a little low than a little high. It's about 30 thousandths right at the moment here is what clearance I'm getting when I check it this way. That's not a lot. When I look at it like this, and I'm looking at the plane of the top, it looks pretty close to right. It, this almost disappears here, but it doesn't. I see a little bit of an overbow in the neck, which I think is going to come out when we string it up. I really think it's about as close as I can get it. You know, so much of this is just seat of your pants guess, really, because things change dynamically when you start putting strings on there and everything just kind of changes. With 12 strings pulling, I think I'm going to take the chance and go exactly where I'm at. Boy, I don't know. I may regret it, but I think I'm going to go exactly where I'm at. Like I said, there is a slight overbow in the neck and that'll change it. That'll bring it back up a little bit when that pulls out. I think it's going to be really, really close when the tension gets on it. So I'm just going by gut feel. I hope I'm right, because I'm going to glue it in there like it is. Well, I've been saying I'm going to glue it on there, but in order to procrastinate and just delay it as long as possible, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut the little heel plate and make that for it and get that ready before I glue it in there. You know, might as well delay it if I can. So there you go. And I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to make that yet. I'm going to make it multiple layers. Some of them come all the way up to the back. This one's a little short for that. I don't think I'm going to bring it all the way up to flush with the back. I think I'm going to bring it about halfway up to binding, something like that. I think it'll look better. I don't necessarily like them when they come all the way flush with the back myself. I kind of like the look of them being a little bit low. That's just my preference. I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference. So I'll find me some woods that I can make myself agree to, to uh, put in here. I'm going to put a couple of different colors in there, it looks like. Well, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I've gone to a lot of trouble on this heel cap. And I've made all kinds of little laminates there, multicolored, and they match the binding pretty much exactly. And it just so happens that the neck depth came up to the bottom of this binding wasn't planned, it was just one of those deals where it's better to be lucky than good. And I got lucky there. Melissa says, I always talk about the Rosa curse. I need to talk about my Rosa blessing. Well, there you go. There's my Rosa blessing right there. And it worked out just perfect. It looks like I planned it that way, but the truth of it is it just kind of happened. And that's the truth. So I'm going to glue it together and make a heel cap out of that. And that should work out just fine. I think I'm going to glue all this together as a separate glue up and then lay it on there because I think that'll be easier. At least I think it will. Although I might be wrong. I'll think about that off camera and let you know. 
Well, I've kind of decided, I think I'm gonna go ahead and glue these up separately. I'm gonna go ahead and get the neck glued on. If the neck was already glued on, I'd probably glue these up individually and put them on there, but it's not, and so therefore, I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this up and let it set overnight. And I'll glue these up and let this set overnight. And we'll address that part in the morning. So let me get this neck glued on here and I'll show you what that looks like. Gonna go ahead and get some glue on this thing. I'm done procrastinating. It's time to stick it on here. We'll see what happens. You know, it's, uh, it's one of them irreversible things. Once you do this, you can't go back, you know? And not easily anyway. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this little extra glue that I think is extra and spread it around inside. Feels like it's a little more than I need here. I'm going to uh, set this on here temporarily and get the glue down on the top here and then see how that's making contact and spread the glue a little bit more in that area too. This is not the time to skimp on your glue. You definitely want to make sure you get good coverage on something like this. I think we're in good shape. Like I said, I you know I want it everywhere, and then it makes contact here and here, so I want to make sure that it's glued there also. I don't want any place to come loose. So that ought to do it. And first thing I'm going to do is just take this and force it down in there a little bit and do the other side. I would use those Clico clamps here except there's so many braces and things in the way because I think they would work great for something like this too except for the fact that there's too many things in the way and even this clamp's giving me trouble so we have to punt a little bit here. Off camera, I've taken a paintbrush and, that was wet and cleaned up the glue around these edges. I took off the two clamps that were on the very end here, and I'm going to put this bigger, thicker, heavier clamp right here in the middle to press down the middle, and then I'll clamp down those ends again after I get this down as far as I think it needs to go. Giving me trouble. As they often do. There we go. It's squeezing glue out again. That's a good thing. And I'm cleaning it up again. You can choose sometimes to clean up this glue squeeze out after it dries with a chisel. I typically do it with water ahead of time. One thing about doing it with, with the water is you got to be committed. You got to make sure you clean it up really good. Otherwise, you'll leave a residue and, and have a problem. For some people, it may be better to just go ahead and wait and clean it up with a chisel later. Okay, those are good. Now I would like to get one more clamp on this, I think, and probably a bigger clamp. Not sure if this will fit there yet or not, but if it will, I might try it. Yeah, it's, good. it's gonna be close. I think I'll take these off temporarily at least and try to put a better, stronger clamp there. Got some good thick leather, and we'll see how this works. Boy, it's just barely gonna fit if it, if it fits. I think this will work. Let me tighten it down and think, think we're good. Done the best I can with it. It's gonna have to wait till tomorrow to see whether I'm happy or crying. So we'll just let that set off camera here. And I'll go ahead and glue up these little pieces that are gonna make up that heel cap. So here's how I'm gonna attempt that. If this don't work, 
I may be doing it again. I'm just getting glue in this general area here. And I know that this is big enough to cover it. So I'm just going to sit it on there. Put more glue in this one. If this wasn't such a small job, I'd put it in the vacuum press. But I don't think I'm going to get the vacuum press out for this. I think that's going to work. And then I'll just put a clamp on that. Let it sit overnight. Hopefully it doesn't move on me. It squeezes the glue out really well. Make sure it's not going to get down on my table there. It doesn't seem to be moving, so I'm hoping that that's going to work. I could have made those pieces just a little bit bigger, wouldn't have hurt anything. I think it'll work out okay. So, we'll see you in the morning. Well, my friends, the neck is all glued in there. It's the next day and things are going well. I've been waiting to put this last end piece on here until I had it on the guitar. I would call it pre-stressing it. I haven't really bent it to the perfect shape or anything using the heating iron. I'm just stretching it and bending it with my fingers. And I gotta be careful so that I don't bend it too far, but I've got it sort of going into the shape it needs to be. And I have already done one test fit and it seems to work real good. I've got this clamp on the ends here so that it doesn't push these other pieces of binding away. And so really the bottom line is all I gotta do is get some glue on this, press it into place, and I think we're good to go. That's what we're gonna try to do here. Kind of made a mess, so I'm gonna clean up a little mess here before I go any further. I think I can force it into place but we'll see. There it went right in. And now I just need to get some more pieces to force it round because it's, it's kind of round in the middle but it's not touching everywhere. I see a problem, I didn't, didn't notice it. I left this too thick. So I'm gonna start over and thin it down because it, it's thicker than the outside bindings. I was wondering why I was having so much trouble bending that clean that up and we'll start again. Okay, let's try this one more time. I've thinned the binding down to the proper thickness now and it goes in there much easier by the way. And now I should be able to get me some uh, little sticks or something and push this into place in the corners that we can prop across here. I'll figure that out and show you what that looks like here in just a minute. Well, there you can see how I clamp that. I put a piece of leather around the hole here and just put some little short sticks and force them in there. And it makes it pretty round so you can see there how it makes it conform. No problem at all. We'll just give that a couple hours to set up and we'll move on. I believe I showed you that uh, all the wood I glued together for this heel cap and that's kind of how it's turning out there. It's looking really nice. It's a little bit big yet, still needs to be worked down just a tiny bit. But I'm gonna go ahead and get it glued on there and then I'll work out the detail in place. So I'll put a little glue on there and just clamp it up. I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. Well, that's what she looks like right now and I think that looks kind of cool. It kind of looks like the binding continues all the way around. So I think that looks pretty cool. Hope you do too. I'm getting ready to route some design into the ends of this bridge and of course it's the design that's inlaid in this neck and so it'll match that. I've already placed it and drawn around it so I know where I need to route out. I've got my router here and I've got this little jig set up and now I think about it these screws aren't driven in I need to drive those in. I'll do that off camera. What I was trying to figure out, I can see how I could use this to measure my depth here with this. That's not much of an issue. But what I was trying to figure out is if there would be a way I could adapt this somehow to measure the height of this. But because this hole's too large for this to span and measure it accurately, I mean, I get sort of a, a measurement, but I, you know, the hole's just bigger than the end of that. 
and you didn't see any of that because I didn't have it in screen. So let me show you that again. What I'm actually trying to do is measure the height of this. I know where it's at right now. Right now it's actually touching the top of my bridge and I want to drop it, you know, pull the bit out 50 thousandths which would match the inlay. And there's no real, real accurate way to measure that. The problem is that this hole is so large that the end of this falls down through the hole. I mean, it sort of matches, but it doesn't really. Just about the time you get it where you want it, it starts to, one end or the other falls through the hole. So, I mean, I can get close. But I was just trying to figure out a way to adapt this to make it work for things sticking out this way, but it's really designed for using going inside of something rather than this way. Oh well, I'll figure something out. I just need to drop the bit out another 50 thousandths. Actually, I've got to change bits and that's one of the reasons I wanted to do it very accurately. I've got to change bits and drop it out 50 thousandths. I guess the most accurate way I can come up with is to measure the height of this bit right at the moment. That time I got 1045. The problem with this is it's not real accurate. You get a different measurement almost every time. 1046, that's pretty good. And when I say 1046, it's 1.046 actually. Yeah, 1.046 is what I'm getting. And I want to drop it 50 thousandths, so I need to make it say 1.09 uh, six. So that's what I'm going to shoot for. Well, I'm going to go ahead and try a test hole here on this uh, inlay. I'm going to just route a little tiny hole in the center and measure the depth of that first. That way I won't get the hole too deep if it's set too deep, and I kind of think it might be. Well, that's really close right there. That's 47 thousandths. 45 thousandths. 47, depends how you measure it there. And this is measures at 50, 50, 51. So if anything, it needs to be a hair deeper. I can't let this stick up much because I would sand off the detail. So this has to be fairly close. So I'll loosen this up, tighten this ever so slightly and try it again in that test hole and see if it made a difference. 51 thousandths, 49, 49.50. I think I'm gonna go with that because I, with the glue and everything in there too, that should be just about perfectly level. I know you can't really see what I'm doing. I've got the light behind here, which is just giving me enough light to see where the pencil mark is, and I'm routing it out to the pencil mark. That's about as accurate as I can make it. So let's, can you see what I did there? What it looks like, and we should be able to fit this right down in there, I think. It should should go pretty tight. I think it'll fit. I'm not even sure I've got the right one, you know, because there could be a slight difference between the two. But it looks like it's going to go. I think I can force it in there. And forcing on inlay is okay as long as you don't break it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the test hole on this side and see if it's the right depth on this side and then we'll go from there. Oh, that's a lot deeper, 59 thousandths. Yep, that's too deep, so I'm glad I checked that. And basically all I have to do is turn this out, let the base come down a little bit. All right, I'll, I'll move out just a little bit and test it again. Wow, that actually is testing deeper. That's not right. 57 thousand, so I did move it a little bit. 54, it's hard to get this thing perfectly level on when you're measuring that fine. 56, so it did help it a little bit. I gotta let it a little bit more yet. That's 47 there. 
I'm going to try it in a little different spot because it's hard to tell with this because of the slight curve. Forty-six. Okay, so I'm maybe went a little too far. I'm going to try to tighten it back up just a hair. I'm going to call that good enough and try it and see what it does. I think that's going to work. So I think both of those will work. Got to get the glue and everything, get that going. But I think they're going to work. I'll show you how that looks in a minute. I'm just about ready to put this inlay in there. I think I might have you zoomed in a little bit too much. I'm going to put the inlay in this bridge now. You know, when you look at it by eye, it looks like this right here could just be a little tight. So I'm going to just take the scalpel here and trim just a tiny, tiny bit right in the corner here. Whoops. Be careful blowing around your inlay. You can blow it off the table and onto the floor. Ask me how I know that. The CA glue is what I often use on inlay, but on this, because of the shape of this, I'm going to use this uh, regular wood glue. I mean, both of these are wood parts. And the reason I'm doing that is to give me plenty of time for alignment here. In case it doesn't line up well, I can always do something else. I can take it back out if I have to. It's kind of a forced fit. At least I think it is. There it is. Went right in there. But with the wood glue, I've got a little time for making it work. Where with the CA glue, very little time. You're just, you get like one stab at it. If I knew it was going to fit perfectly on a forced fit like this, I wouldn't worry about it. I'd just use the CA glue. But this is hard to know if it's going to fit that well. I believe this one's going to fit even better. So I'm going to go ahead and get the glue in there. Squeezer in place. There it goes. Just about perfect. So they both went in there really well. They both did exactly what I wanted, so I think we're in good shape. I'm at that point where it won't be long and I'll be putting finishes on this. So I always hang them up by the uh, hole here on the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark the location for the strap button. And since this is a uh, European guitar, I'm going to use the metric system to find the center here. And actually, all joking aside, I think the metric system is the easiest way to find the center. It's a simpler uh, measuring. I'm centering it here between uh, 0 and 13 centimeters. There's just 2 millimeters shy of 13 centimeters. So, the center of 13 would be 6.5 and that's right there. 6.5, I guess, if I wanted to be grammatically correct with the uh, metric system. 6.5 centimeters. And that put me right dead center. So I'm pretty sure that that's perfectly center, but the uh, way to check it is to check it here. 64 millimeters right there, and 64 millimeters right there. So well, that is dead center. So now I'll just take a little, take an awl and I'll just poke a little tiny hole right there, indention. And I usually poke it and then twist it a little bit. And that sends the point down into the wood a little bit. And what that does is lets the drill bit follow it a little bit better and go where it won't wander off. So now I'll get a drill bit and I'll drill that hole. I'm sure most of you know how to pick out a drill for a uh, screw, but the best way I like to do it is I hold the drill right on top of the screw and I want to see threads on both sides, but I don't want to see the center shaft of the screw. And then you know you're exactly the right size hole. 
So I picked that one out and I'm about ready to drill the hole here. I'm just kind of eyeballing how deep I want to drill it. It doesn't need to go to the half the depth of the bit here. So now I just try to get perpendicular in both directions. And I, I do have a little drill guide that I could use, but you know, it's not that critical, number one. And number two, I'm pretty good at this. Well, I thought I had the camera on, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. And so I just put the end pin button on this. I centered it, then I drilled the hole and put the uh, little uh, strap button on there. Now I'm probably going to turn my attention to making the nut and uh, because I want to get this thing set up here. Off camera, I've made the nut and installed it here for the guitar. It doesn't have any grooves in it yet. That's because I don't know where they go. I'm also getting ready to put this truss rod cover on. I'm trying to do all the detail setup work and everything prior to doing the finishes so that we don't have to do too much after it's got the finish on it. I don't know if you, if anybody out there who knows how to really select the uh, proper drill for your screw, but what I do is I line them up and look with the drill on my vision side and I lay the screw under the drill and then I want to see threads on both sides of the drill and then that way you know you're using the proper size drill for the screw. So that's what I've done here. Now I'm just going to approximate a perpendicular to this plane here. I've already marked where the holes are supposed to go and I used an awl to uh, poke the hole down in there a little bit to make a little mark. That way the drill follows that mark a little bit better. I'm not going too deep. These screws are not real long. You can put tape on your drill if you need it for a depth gauge. I didn't do that in this case. And I'm going to get out the wax. So I've got the wax and I just take and drag the screw through the wax to get the wax on the threads, down in the threads. Then I get her going. I think I have my little steel chainsaw screwdriver here. The wax really does make the screws drive a lot easier, especially that first time you put them in the hole. Now keep in mind, everything here is real wood, including this truss rod cover, so you don't want to go tightening that down so tight that it busts the wood. And I say that for the customer's benefit if he ever takes this off down the road. You just snug it up and call that good enough. And if you hear a rattle sometime, you snug it up just a little bit more. Mainly just wanted to make sure that the screws drive in okay before I do the staining and finishing. And give you a look at it there. Getting very close to the end. I think I'm ready now, finally, 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 I think, to put a couple of strings on here and try to mark where the bridge is going to go. Off camera, I've made a lot more progress. You can see I've got all the tuning keys on there, got them all lined up real nice, got all the screws in place. Even though we haven't got any finish on this yet, I wanted to get all that done so that it'll be less to do once the finish is on it. The two strings that are on there have not been tuned up yet, but you can see my little rig that I use to set the intonation. Now, uh, keep in mind, this is just coat hanger wire with some bent hooks. If I would, you know, come up with any criticism on this, I should have bent the hooks. They should have just been a little bit wider, you know. It's a little narrow right here, you know, but it's not that big a deal. So I just go with it. It seems to work fine. It always seems to set the intonation real well, so I'm good with it anyway. 
But if I did have a criticism, that would be it. This should have been a little wider. Basically, you want the strings to, you know, pretty much be in the place they're going to be when you're setting it up live. I haven't tuned these to pitch yet. I just started, so I thought you might like to hear the sound of it. The peg head's a little bit heavy, but it's not crazy heavy as I thought it was going to be. So there's, I don't know if you can see the tuner, you probably can't, but I need to get it where I can see it. There's a D. That's a D right now. I know I'm, there's an E flat. Is that the E? That's still an E flat. There it is. Got a nice deep tone. There's an E flat. Nice clear note. holding pretty well. Now I just set the bridge in place. I don't know that it's even close. Let me zoom you back out so you can see what I'm doing. I put some little tiny pencil marks there so I'd have an idea about where I think it should be, but now let's test it. So you can see there the needle pretty much on dead center. It's a little a little bit sharp, about about five cents sharp, so that just means this needs to move back just a slight amount. very slightly sharp. Let's see if this side's still sharp. Still a little bit sharp too, so both of them need to come back just a little bit more yet. Whenever it's sharp, that just means your string is too short. Sharp means short. That's the way I remember it. It's just a simple way to remember it. Sharp, short. Okay, let me right on the money. a little bit sharp. Okay, we can get back some more. That looks real good right there. pretty darn good too. I think we're pretty close now. I'm about, oh, a little more than an eighth inch back further than what I measured. That's why you can't just measure these things and expect it to be perfect, or at least I can't. Let's just see how it measures out now, now that all the parts are together. Before, when I measured it, of course, all these things weren't together, so that makes a big difference too. Let's just use millimeters. So 321 millimeters to the 12th fret. I've got about 324 between the 12th fret and the saddle. So for whatever reason it seems to need to be a little bit longer between here and the 12th than it does from the nut to the 12th. And I don't much care what that reason is as long as I know that it notes correctly. And 
We're going to double check this a few times. You can maybe see the tuner there a little bit. I'll zoom you back in again and I'll double check it. Even if you don't have it perfectly on the note, the toner should go to the same place, you know. It's pretty good. Pretty close. Nice little sound. I think it's going to be a nice guitar. Just for grins, even though it's really not set up yet, let's just see where the action's at. I was worried the action might be too low the way it looked because of the overbow that, that was in there. I don't think it's going to be low. In fact, it looks a little high at the moment. It's about 95 on the Big E. And keep in mind, this is high here, I can tell, no problem at all. So that'll help that a little bit. This side's a little lower, I think. This side here is about 75, between 75 and 80. So we're in real good shape there, I think. I think we know we can set this thing up now. I'm tempted to try a different method. It's not a method that uh, is new, you know, innovative or anything. Big companies do this all the time, but I'm thinking about doing it a little bit more specifically, meaning that I'm thinking about putting tape under the exact spot of this bridge. The way I would do that is I would, you know, put bigger piece of tape here, get the intonation perfectly, then score the tape, peel off the extra tape, just leave the exact shape of this bridge in tape, then spray it, and then I wouldn't have to scrape off so much varnish. So I'm thinking about trying that on this one. I'm not sure I'm going to do it because my method I've been doing, you know, when you're just doing one-off guitars, scraping that off isn't that big a deal. But this is a bigger bridge and it is detailed with these points and everything. So it's a little bit more detailed to scrape. So I might try that with the tape. I'm going to give it a little bit of thought. And if I decide to do that, I'll show you how that looks. Well, you can see I did decide to go ahead and try the tape idea. I had already marked this front edge, so I put the tape right on that line, and then I just set the bridge back on here, and, you know, and of course I had to put a little extra tape around behind, you know, to make it the full width. Anyway, I've double-checked the uh, intonation. It seems to test perfectly. Very good. Very good. So I've also uh, set the action up at the first fret, so it's very close. It gives you a better chance of having the intonation perfect too. I'm double checking the height here, and it's down a little bit now. It's about, on the bass side, it's 77, almost 80 thousandths. On the treble side, I think it might even be a little lower, maybe 70 thousandths if that. It's good and low right now. It seems like it's going to be just fine. I like this here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a clamp on this so this can't move on me. And then I'm going to very lightly score that tape and hopefully peel that tape up. That's what I'm going to try to do. Let's see how well that works. Well, I've got the clamp on there. It seems good and solid, so I don't think it's going to move on me. I double-checked the intonation again just to make sure, even with the clamp on there, that it was still right. And it seems to be, if anything, even better with the clamp on there. Probably just because it's making a more solid connection. That's really, really good. Now I'm going to do my best to try to peel that off exactly to the shape of that bridge. Let's see how that goes. Got a uh, X-Acto knife here with a pretty darn new blade. It's been used just a little tiny bit. I'm going to try not to cut into the wood. Just wanting to score it ever so slightly. 
going to use this round one here. I shouldn't have put the ends down so tight. Don't think I cut all the way through. Yeah, I think maybe I did. Yep, that one worked okay. So I'm just do a little piece at a time here and just take my time. I don't think I'm cutting into the wood enough to matter. You definitely would not want to cut down into the wood deep. Let's see if that worked. Perfect. Well, if this was any better, so far I'd have to pay entertainment tax, so I don't want it to get any better. I don't want to have to pay entertainment tax. That's a high tax these days. One more thing I ought to double double check, and I think I've already checked it, but I want to check it again. Okay, we're at about 9.3 centimeters, just approximately there. 9.3, 9.4, something like that. We're at about, about 9.2 or 3, so we're really close millimeters, just a millimeter or so from one side to the other, so that's close enough on the centering. I was also looking down this and looking down this. Everything looks real good and centered, so I'm going to go with that. Now I just got to cut away the inside here, the hard part. Again, I'm not pressing hardly at all. I'm trying to keep from pressing, actually just trying to score the tape almost. There's a teeny tiny little piece out here on this back side that I think I could have done a little bit better. I left a little bit of blue tape showing. I mean, it's tiny. I'm going to cut it out. Yep, got it. Now let's see if this will peel off. If these two will peel off, then I think we've done what we wanted to do. Very good. Well, that's as good as it can be done, I think. So now we've got the tape under where the bridge goes. And we should be able to start putting finish on this thing, I believe. I'll make sure I'm not doing a hurry up and screw up here, but I'm anxious to get the finish on this thing and get it going. I probably do need to do a little bit of detailing before I do the finish. In other words, there's little tiny microscopic little holes and imperfections, and I'm going to go around and fill those and sand it again a little bit and make sure it's all really, really nice. I'm not going to probably film that just because it's tedious nothing to it other than just to do it so i'm going to do that and then i'll show you what it looks like when we start putting the finish on here well surprise surprise it's caleb over at jerry's desk and he's given me a little task on this 12 string he's asked me to go ahead and sand some of the binding where there it's turned a little bit of orange i think you might be able to see it there on that bottom edge Right along here, it's started to turn orange from the paduke. So I'm taking some 320 through and sanding, sanding it, trying to get it to whiten up. I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. Jerry's off working at the rental house today, doing one thing or another up there. And also, Jerry, in his color blindness, has a harder time seeing where it's orange. So. I can do this a little bit easier. He's also asked me to go ahead and get it taped up in the first couple of coats on this today. Well, it'll be the first coat today. That's all I'll really get. Since there's also another guitar I'm working on that needs sprayed. This works pretty good. I'm just trying to keep all of my sanding on the binding so I'm not turning up any more red. I think it's really looking pretty good. It's getting nice and white. I'm trying to find a good place where you can see the horn. The light's kind of washing it out so it looks pretty white, at least through the through the camera screen. I can see it, you know, a slight tint of orange in person though, so. Well, I just thought I'd show you a little bit of this. Um, I might show you a little bit of taping it up too, but that'll be here in a little bit. Well, uh, you can see I've already started taping up the nut. Uh, I've got pretty much the whole thing sanded pretty good. But one thing I also did was I kind of scraped with the round-ended X-Acto blade the rose because it turned a little red from the paduk. So I think I'm ready to keep taping this up and I'm going to get the fretboard done now. And then I'll get some newspaper to stick on the inside and we'll stick the screw in there to hang this from. Alright, that's pretty good for the fretboard. Now I'm going to try to do the uh, 
press rod hole. I'm trying to think of a good way to fill these tuner holes to some degree just to keep them from getting filled with finish. And I've not really got a good good idea on how to do it. So I probably just won't. And what happens will happen. We've got the fretboard taped off, the truss rod adjustment taped off, and the place Jerry did for the bridge is taped off. I just need to fill it with newspaper now. So now we're all ready to spray except for putting the screw hanger in the end. Let's go ahead and do that as well. Now I'm driving that a little ways in there. About that far and I can tell how far Jerry drives it in there because there's finish on the uh, threads. So as soon as I get to the finish I'll stop. And there I've got a hanger. I think this is ready to go. Go ahead and go hang this up probably and then when I'm ready to spray it with finish I'll spray it with finish. So I guess the next time you see it, it'll probably have some finish on it. My friends, it's been a while since I've worked on this guitar. I had uh, Caleb, as you saw, perhaps do some final touch up on it and, you know, just getting it ready for spraying. And then he sprayed a couple of coats on here. So it's looking really, really good. But once again, I got my cart before my horse and I had intended on you know doing some final work on this neck to bring it down a little bit it's still a little large as you know be, being a 12 string it needs to have a little bit larger neck but I, it's a little over that yet I think so I'm going to take it down a little bit and it won't take anything to respray this a lot of the times I prefer them without any finish on them at all and just oil them the standard is to finish the neck so that's what we'll do here I just got some measurements off of another Martin neck that I'm just going to more or less mimic but leave them a little proud of the Martin size because of the 12 string. So here we go. I've already checked it here and I know I got to come down quite a bit. I'm using a double cut rasp. You can probably see the pattern in there. It's not real aggressive. It looks more aggressive than it really is. I'm going to try to leave it about 50 thousandths thicker through the, the critical areas. I've measured it at the odd number of frets. And let's check it at the ninth fret here and see where we're at. And of course, I've got tape on here too, so I kind of have to allow for that a little bit too. All right, I'm at one inch, 33 thousandths, and the 936. So roughly I need to take it down about 50 thousandths is what I want to do in this area right here. So we'll just kind of work in my measured areas and then we'll smooth it all out. Okay, that took it down to just about one inch even, so we took about 30 thousandths off there. So we need a little bit more like that. Uh, 995 roughly, so we still need to go down quite a bit. About another 30 thousandths approximately still. Actually, 985 is just about right. Now I look at it. Yeah, we're right on the money there. That's real close. It's about 980 at the moment. So that's good. Actually, it's 970. Well, it depends where I measure it. It's a little bit off. 975 roughly, which is about 40 thousandths more than the Martin. So that's probably fine. We'll just go with that. Try to keep bring that taper all the way forward and go about 40 thousandths. So I'll go to the first fret. 803, so I'm going to say shoot for around 850, something like that. We're at 900 right now. So roughly 50 thousandths off of here. Shooting for 803, well 803 is the target is the original number. I'm shooting for about 853 somewhere in there. We're at 873 so only need to take about 20 more thousandths off. 
that comes off pretty fast. It doesn't take long to get 20 thousandths off. So, kind of take my time on that. There's 863. I'm looking for about 853, so about 10 more thousandths, roughly. And we'll stop there because we're going to have to smooth it too, and that'll take a little bit more. So now, basically, I just need to make this all smooth and feel perfect from here to there. Really doesn't matter exactly what the measurements are between here and there, as long as it's a smooth taper. Looking at it, I can still see it's a little high, just for grins. The seventh fret is 910 on the original, so three, five, seven. So I would want to be about 960 roughly, and I'm at 998. So, you know, it's a little bit high. Okay, just looking for the line down. I'm looking down this way at it, which you can't really tell that on camera, but I can see the straight line on the very, you know, on the highest part of the neck here, or the biggest part of the crown, or the top of the crown, whatever you want to call that on the back side here. Anyway, I'm looking at that, and it looks pretty good coming from up here down, a little bit high right in here, I think, right in here. And the thing about that is, is that you have to feather it out. You know, you can't just take it off in one spot. You kind of concentrate your effort in the heavy area, but you have to fan it out to the other areas. Looks pretty good. Just kind of using this as a straight line to see if I have any big humps there. Um, not much. It's pretty level. There's a little bit of a hump right in about here. That's almost flat. It's pretty darn good, really. A little bit of a hump in this area here. We turn the file down flat again and kind of just rub the whole thing. That should be pretty darn good now. Got a tiny bit of a rock right about there, right about here. So, I don't think you could feel that now. It's pretty darn good. Now I'm going to just feather this all off to the edges and. You know, the trick about that now, especially with the nice binding and everything, is to try to just feather it up to that binding and not hit the binding. You can probably see I'm leaving a, a band there of finish right up to the end. That's because this is still kind of a rough rasp, and I don't want to get up there too close. Now I'm just kind of, again, just eyeballing it, looking at it, anything like this. You can, the straight edge like this, looking at it into the light. There's a light behind the camera there, so that gives me a good view of the, the light shining under this. And if anything, there's a tiny bit of a lump right in here. Right now, I'm not too worried about the fine detail of it. I'm just kind of getting it roughed out. While this may look tedious, cumbersome, hard to do, etc., and so forth, in my opinion, and I'm not just saying this for the camera, in my opinion, the neck is the easiest part of the instrument to make. It's just not that hard to do. One of the reasons I say that is because it happens so fast. It doesn't take very long to make a neck if you just get after it. That's getting pretty close. I'm going to switch to the little bit smoother file, and this is not exactly a real smooth file, but it's smoother than that one. It's still a double cut. Okay, I'll 
turn it over this way. And I can get a little bit closer to the binding with this file. You can see most of the wood that I've taken off of this is right here. It's considerably more than you might think. I'll probably save some of that for filler for down the road. It's, it's nice to have this very fine filings to uh, fill little holes and things with glue. So I'll probably save some of that. I've probably got some around. That's starting to feel pretty good. The ultimate test on a guitar though to me is to hold it down like this and feel what it feels like. And it feels a little bit flat on the back side so I can tell I don't have it rounded off enough. So like right here, it's a little flat. Just hold it like so and I can feel it. Feeling pretty good, it's not so big now. A little flat still. So I'm just gonna work on that some more. I'll turn it back on whenever I uh, get to uh, more of a smoothing operation where I'm just about down to the final. I only did a little more work off camera. It's getting pretty close. I'm gonna take the scraper and try that. Honestly, the scraper's not very sharp right now. The way I sharpen a scraper, you kind of have to sharpen them pretty often. They don't hold an edge very long. There is some sharp areas on this still. The reason I'm going to the scraper is it does a smoothing job and removes quite a bit of wood at the same time. I'm trying to uh, round it a little more. It's still just a little flat, in my opinion, on the back side there where I leveled it across. So I'm trying to round up to that to what you would call the crown here in the middle. This little end of the scraper is still pretty sharp, so that's what I'm using. Still pretty flat right down the very, very center. Well, if I was gonna save that dust, I should have done it before I did the scraping here because uh, now it's got these curls in it. Oh well, it's not like I can't make more sawdust. Check it again. It's really starting to feel pretty nice. I think this side's a little better than this side perhaps. The uh, scraper, what it really does well is get rid of all the file marks and smooths it out, but it also does remove considerable amount of wood at the same time. Anytime I need to remove the finish off of an instrument or remove the finish off of a neck, for instance, someone who wants to go to a bare neck like I use, I always use a scraper to do that. The reason you can, a scraper is the perfect tool is you can bring it into a tight spot like this and pull it away. Okay, I think I'm gonna go to some, uh, Oh, I think I'll start with some 180 and go with that first and see what it feels like and might have to come back to the scraper. Clean up a little bit of this mess and then I'll move on to the next step here with the sandpaper. As I said, this is 180. I'm going to feel that now and see what that feels like. Actually, you can tell a lot more when the strings are on there. That's definitely feeling better than where we were. We were pretty big. It's still a large neck, don't get me wrong, but it's not a huge neck. Well, you can see what I do there with the sanding, and basically I'm gonna go to uh, 
I'm gonna go to a 220 next. But before I go to the 220, I'm gonna take this 180 and work around these detail areas here. And I'm not gonna film that just because it's just gonna take a while. I'm gonna work, you know, the rest of this out real good with this 180. And then we'll move to the 220. I won't film that either. I'll just show you what it looks like when I get her finished. Oh, I would imagine I sanded on that detail-wise probably an hour. But it's really, really nice now. That neck is slick. It's just as slick as snot on a doorknob. And uh, it's just, just feels wonderful. So I think it's fine. I'm glad I did that. It was chunky before. It's still a large neck. No question about that, I don't think, but it's nothing like huge, and I don't think it would feel uncomfortable playing it, you know, as a 12 string. Once I get the strings on it, sometimes they feel a little different again, but as far as I can tell, this is, is about as good a shape as I can get it in until I get the strings on it at least. So we're just hope for the best. <laughs>